हाँ मैंने कर दिया लाइव ऑन कर दिया फिर मैं बता दूंगा जैसे वो ठीक है ठीक है आप स्पीकर पे और आप भी लाइव पे आ रहे हो ठीक है अब एंड कर दो कॉल को एक मिनट चेक करना आईपैड में अभी थोड़ा टाइम लगेगा यार आईपैड में तो मेरी प्रेजेंटेशन नहीं आ रही यार समझा करो दो मिनट ठीक है कर रहा हूँ कर रहा हूँ कर रहा हूँ Hi guys, I hope you can hear me. Uh, welcome to the FMG Sprint session. Dr. Jagdish uh, Chaturvedi here, and uh, just waiting for a few more people to join in, and we will get uh, started. Um, you can all see. Just type a hi if you are there, so that I know you are there on the. Okay. at evening professor thank you dr kapil so we are going to get started so guys today i'm going to do pyqs so don't think yaar pyqs hai why shall we focus on pyqs we have already done it but guys here's one thing that you should know about fmg about 70 to 75% of the questions in fmg are coming tod madod ke from your pyqs only for the from the last 3 years Uh, they are picking similar topics. There may be an option in a previous exam or two exams before, but they are largely picking up very very similar things. And we are not seeing too many novel or new questions uh, that are coming in FMG. That's why this is a very important aspect for you to do. What I'm going to be spending time on today is telling you how we think of the answer, how we think of the response, and also cover the other choices. Okay. so the other choices also will be covered a little bit about that so that if a question is created from that because see at the end of the day guys it's a it's a question bank they also have a question bank uh, do, pro doctors like us we submit to many question banks both indian exams international exams uh, so uh, for that uh, you know these softwares are there which you know randomly pick from that same pool and they set a question and ent questions largely fmg has been not more than 10 to 15 questions and they have very strongly predominated from the pyqs so um, i'll do all the pyqs from the last 3 years including what we did uh, what what came in the last july as well all right so we'll go through it quickly if you want me to spend some time uh, in some areas a little more you can uh, write it over here if you want me to cover parallelly any other topic which you find hard to understand put it in the chat uh, in the comment section we will cover that uh you know uh, out of this as well okay this is your session at the end of the day mujhe already ye answers pata hai okay so this is for you so guys let's uh, let's get started uh, and please keep letting me know that you are there by sending something to the other in the comment section otherwise engagement nahi rahega which is the uh, following best described trotters triad see this trotters triad uh, has come three or four times uh, in different ways it has a clinical uh, significance because um this is uh, caused by the spread of nasopharyngeal carcinoma okay so nasopharyngeal carcinoma second and is not working i'm uh, resetting it So in trotter strat what happens is in nasopharyngeal carcinoma there is this sinus of morgagni and sinus of morgagni is this space between the skull base and um, you know the first pharyngeal constrictor this is a place through which laterally this is the lateral space so this is the space through which you know the eustachian tube and um, you know all the muscles of the eustachian tube you know they go through all right like in it's back all right so in trotter striad what happens is this is for nasopharyngeal carcinoma nasopharyngeal carcinoma nasopharyngeal carcinoma it is a very invasive tumor so what happens is on the lateral side of the nasopharynx right where the eustachian tube is there 
there is the space between the skull base and the first pharyngeal constrictors that is called as a sinus of morgagni sinus of morgagni this sinus of morgagni because the eustachian tube the two muscles of the uh, that supply the eustachian tube tensor muscle tensor veli palatini and the levator veli palatini and some ascending pharyngeal artery branches they go there so that's why it causes palatal palsy temporoparietal pain because of the sympathetic nerve plexus around it and conductive hearing loss remember it does not cause sensory neural hearing loss it causes conductive hearing loss it does not cause retroorbital pain retroorbital pain is caused by the uh, occipital division of the uh, you know trigeminal nerve so that is not retroorbital pain does not uh, come in this space at all this is a very lateral uh, structure so your pain will be temporoparietal this side pain temporoparietal because this sinus of morgagni is a lateral structure so here the correct answer is palatal palsy temporoparietal pain and conductive hearing loss because eustachian tube stops functioning because of the invasion of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma into the sinus of morgagni and this triad is called as the trotter's triad another hint is trotter is a doctor uh, uh, who is largely worked in the space of the nasopharynx you hear, see the trotter's method bhi hota hai where you pinch the nose to stop bleeding uh, you know you must have seen that when there is nasal bleeding people go up like this you should not do that you should pinch the nose and bend forward and that is called as the trotter's method so when you see the word trotter you know that it has something to do with the nasopharynx or the nose because this is uh, someone who has worked a lot in this particular space so these are all the clues that can come related to this particular question okay now this is also asked many time yaar which is a, a membrane of the tonsil or the pharynx which can be scraped which cannot be scraped whom karke ye question bar bar they keep asking okay now a child has let's go through the question child has throat pain and fever whitish membrane lot of causes of whitish membrane in the tonsils all right uh, or in this area all of these options are given over here but it bleeds on scraping now here the point that you have that you have to remember only a pseudo membrane see when it is a pseudo membrane yeah it will not bleed so here abdullah abdul wasim is saying the answer is b so child with throat pain fever as whitish membrane tonsillitis which bleeds on scraping what is the possible uh, diagnosis okay so guys here uh, the answer is actually diphtheric tonsillitis now in acute membranous tonsillitis it is a pseudo membrane it is not a real membrane it is all the debris the slough that collects so usko aap scrape karoge wo aaram se scrape ho jayega now uh, here there is in candidiasis you are right in to some extent that if we scrape the candidial uh, you know lesion there will be raw bleeding but look at the symptoms over here fever and throat pain uh, with whitish membrane and tonsillar region now in uh, candidiasis it is largely oral okay oral tongue floor of tongue and candidiasis infections rarely present with fever and severe throat pain candidial infections usually present with lot of burning burning sensation while eating okay so here somehow this candidiasis is not fitting into the picture that too in a child okay candidiasis you expect in someone with immunocompromised state you expect someone who is having diabetes who is having hiv who is old who is on a lot of inhalers steroid inhalers okay similar picture elderly person with uh, you know on steroid inhaler has a patch which you know bleeds on removal yeah candidiasis i can agree but see in a mcq we have to think based on what is given these two lines are given to us and it is not asking that any membrane that bleeds right they're saying child with throat pain and fever fits more of diphtheric tonsillitis diphtheria is a very important clinical point for children right children with uh, with membranous tonsillitis they want you to understand the basics of diphtheria even though we give the diphtheria antitoxin we give the vaccines the examiners want you to understand diphtheria in and out and that's why diphtheria or diphtheria related question comes even if you try to scrape the uh, membrane you should not it'll cause laryngospasm uh, and it also causes vocal cord palsy this this question has come again in uh, fmg here they've asked diphtheria tonsil based on membranous tonsillitis aage ab main question karunga jisme it will be vocal cord palsy seen in a child 
with throat pain and that is also again uh, you know talking about diphtheria all right infectious mononuclear nucleus is also called as kissing's disease seen in very young people because of epstein bar virus and epstein bar virus is related to many things epstein bar virus is related to infectious uh, mononucleosis epstein bar virus also is known in its etiogenic cause for nasopharyngeal carcinoma and epstein bar virus also causes something called as hairy cell leukoplakia which is a white membrane on the tongue which cannot be pulled out okay so i write it here my head is covering it so it's called hairy cell leukoplakia all right so so many questions can come from this one question unke paas ek hi database hai remember that okay don't they don't update it very very frequently so that's why these pyqs are very important easy way for you to ensure 60 70% 80% of questions will come either from the options or from these topics so learn these topics in great detail okay now seven year old child presents with epistaxis bilateral nasal blockage after falling down on face on examination swelling around the nose okay very very important point to focus over here is around okay there is swelling around the nose if the same swelling same question if they say that there is swelling within the nasal cavity on either side of the septum we are starting to think about septal hematoma here we are not thinking about septal hematoma we are thinking about a swelling around the nose around the nasal structure so here they are basically the examiner pointing to kavi yahan kya kehna chahte hain kavi kehna chahte hain that there is probably a fracture and when there is a fracture over here we are basically you know going to do an anterior nasal packing because there is epistaxis and bilateral nasal blockage because of the blood and clots so anterior nasal packing would be the thing over here now guys if you are thinking hematoma hai if it is septal hematoma in septal hematoma there is bleeding collected on either side of the septal wall there will not be any epistaxis the bleeding is internal okay so the clues are always hidden in the question here they are saying there is frank bleeding after the child has fallen and there is swelling around the nose it's most likely some sort of a fracture and, and the bleeding is because of the injury and that's why you have to do anterior nasal packing there is no role of incision and drainage there is no of role of septal excision there is no role of aspiration of septal swelling there is no indication of septal swelling in this three lines of question that is asked read the question carefully before you jump into the conclusion uh, an anterior nasal packing would be the best option over here the reason why it is not septal hematoma because if there is a septal hematoma nasal blockage will be there they will say inside the nose the septum is swollen or the nose is nasal cavity is blocked and there will not be frank epistaxis because agar bleed ho raha tha to hematoma kaise banta hematoma means it's bleeding with with, with and it's not able to come out that's why it is a hematoma all right so this also i think it should be clear ev ghum fir ke epistaxis pe ek na koi question some septal question always same things they have guys so that's why don't neglect pyqs especially for fmg a patient with ear wax undergoes syringing he develops syncope episodes what is the answer for this guys stimulation of which of the following nerves is responsible auricular temporal nerve cord or tympani arnold's nerve or jacobson's nerve what is it that is causing this all right what is the answer guys let's be a little bit interact on the chat abdul wasim is saying c that is correct very very straight forward arnold's nerve is the auricular branch auricular branch of vagus supplies the posterior posterior superior part of the external auditory canal when you are pulling the ear too much or too much of manipulation over here the first symptom there is another question that has been asked or can be asked very frequently is what is the first symptom of irritation of arnold's nerve and that will be coughing it's a parasympathetic reflex so the child will first <coughs> cough even clinically you do any examination of the ear and the patient coughs you pause otherwise you will go into full blown syncope the child here develop a syncope episode syncope means behosh ho gaya Okay, you have to give atropine you have to stimulate you have to do you know it's an emergency basically to deal with such a situation bradycardia and all of that 
auricular temporal nerve is usually asked when it comes to referred pain you know so so generally if there is a parotitis uh, uh, referred pain nerves are from the ear auricular temporal nerve comes quadra tympani is the efferent efferent means taking to the sense organ supplying the anterior two thirds of the tongue jacobson's nerve is nothing but the glossopharyngeal plexus it's a gl glossopharyngeal branch of the plexus that's coming from the ear the tympanic plexus so that is the jacobson's nerve that is coming down the floor of the middle ear so these three are also popular celebrity questions but biggest celebrity of course is arnold all right so auricular branch of vagus nerve let's not waste too much time on this now patient with cso now this is a very interesting question uh, kabhi thoda sa tricky banne ki koshish kar rahe hain so i wanted to think carefully when you answer this psom rene's test was positive rene's test was positive and fistula test was also was positive then patient refused treatment very important aspect patient refuses treatment comes back 2 months later with negative fistula sign now what is the tuning fork test expected in this patient why is this examiner talking to us about this positive fistula test that became negative fistula test what is he trying to indicate in this particular case now if you understand the physiology of the ear well and you understand tuning fork test well you should be able to answer this but this is a tricky question so i'm asking you share your answer in the chat what is what do you think is the answer to this question there is csom first the fistula test was positive and rene's test was positive then they don't tell about the rene's test after that they say fistula sign has become negative after 2 months so what should be the tuning fork test in this case what do you think is the answer guys over here Right. Any guesses? I'm looking at the chat window. Uh, okay, Wasim is saying that it will be false positive Rene's test. Anybody else has any other uh, option? Okay, there are only four people. I am one of them. So then there is only Wasim, and then there are probably two. टेक टीम तो हम लोग ही हैं राइट सो या योर योर आंसर वसीम इज 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 मोस्ट लाइकली करेक्ट ओवर हियर इट विल बी अ फॉल्स पॉजिटिव रेनेस टेस्ट और रिमेंबर दैट पॉजिटिव रेनेस मीन्स एयर कंडक्शन इज बेटर देन बोन कंडक्शन एंड नेगेटिव रेने इज बेसिकली वेन एयर कंडक्शन इज नॉट बेटर देन बोन कंडक्शन और अनदर वे टू से इट इज बोन कंडक्शन इज बेटर देन एयर कंडक्शन All right now what is happening over here is there is CSOM and the fistula test which is when you press the tragus it triggers a, a you know sort of a vertigo now fistula test was positive okay so that means that CSOM was of the invasive nature it was an unsafe CSOM and at that point of time Rene's test was positive okay uh and uh, the fistula test was positive now two months in not taken any treatment so what has happened is the cholestatoma has developed further and that cholestatoma has sat on that labyrinthine fistula this fistula sign is for the uh, labyrinthine fistula so that's why you are going to have uh, you know the fistula test suddenly become negative because the pressure changes are not going into the labyrinth because the cholestatoma is sitting there so in this case uh, you will probably have a false positive renaise because there is going to be conductive hearing loss but because i think this is a very invasive disease would have eaten inside the labyrinth and caused you know some problem into the sensory neural component because unsafe csom also causes a mixed hearing loss and whenever there is sensory neural hearing loss you can get a positive renaise okay so that's why now false negative renaise like trex baba has put false negative renaise is also very commonly asked and false negative renaise occurs in profound profound sensory neural hearing loss when there is profound sensory neural hearing loss dead ear the ear's cochlea is dead and then when you do the rene's test what happens is when you're doing the bone conduction by keeping the the tuning fork here the opposite side cochlea is is being stimulated making you feel that the bone conduction is better than air conduction so it's saying it is negative but it is saying falsely negative because negative basically means that there is conductive problem but there is no conductive problem there is a sensory neural problem of profound nature and that is what you see in false negative rene's test your uh, fistula test and all will not 
come into this uh, picture unless you know here they say that the hearing uh, loss has become profound and severe in cholesteatoma you will not see profound to severe sensorineural hearing loss you will see usually mild to moderate sensorineural hearing loss and that's why false positive rene is there but this whole question is of much debate because three things can easily be in different situations positive but after a lot of discussions uh, and uh, you know the, with this kind of a question um, false positive rene becomes a most likely option all right now a child presents with history of false working आदित्य भाई कर दिए क्या? नहीं यार वो हैंग हो गया है इंटरनेट सडनली रीसेट हो रहा है अभी मैं जस्ट रिकनेक्ट हुआ हूँ आप कॉल करोगे तो आपकी आवाज भी आएगी यार लाइफ पे मुझे व्हाट्सएप कर दिया करो ठीक है ठीक है गाइस हाउ कैन यू हेयर मी Can you hear me now? all right guys so let's continue so this question here like some of you have answered uh, uh this here the answer is a it is esophagus because of the you know location of the foreign body in the wind in the food pipe so in the food pipe what happens is uh anterior posteriorly the foreign body will be seen in a circular manner and in the side view it is going to be uh lateral all right so let's move on without wasting too much time what is battle sign guys so let me see if you guys can hear me what is battle sign there is an option over here periorbital ecchymosis ecchymosis on mastoid blood collection behind the tympanic membrane and pitting edema on the mastoid so what is battle sign is a very uh, straightforward uh, question over here so let me see in the chat window uh, what your answer to this question is so suppose if this is the ear this is the mastoid area so this is a uh, battle sign is basically ecchymosis of the mastoid which is basically because of the skull base fracture can you hear me the sound is the sound coming somebody saying sound is uh, not coming um can you confirm if the sound is coming okay maybe it's just an internet fluctuation so in the skull base fracture okay when there is skull base fracture you have ecchymosis of the mastoid which is called as battle sign and periorbital ecchymosis which is raccoon eye raccoon blood collection behind the tympanic membrane is called hemotympanum which is uh, seen sometimes in the middle ear injuries or fractures uh, and uh, you know wasim is also saying sound is not coming but here the sound input is uh, correct so why is sound not coming sometime internet not coming anterior cranial fossa is yeah raccoon eye all right is sound back is sound back uh yeah and pitting edema on the mastoid is a very interesting sign called as grissinger sign 
in grissinger sign basically what happens is there is edema so this is where you can get confused with an image between battle sign and grissinger sign because when there is uh, you know thrombophlebitis of the mastoid emissary veins mastoid emissary veins you will see um, you know Ah, Akash, hi. So you can, when there is a thrombophlebitis of the mastoid area, no, that time there is some edema over here, uh, and that is seen in Grissinger sign or thrombophlebitis, lateral sinus thrombophlebitis. Also, you will see so lateral sinus thrombophlebitis, LST. You can see pitting edema on the mastoid. There is a triad over here. There will be papillo edema because of increased intracranial pressure. There will be pitting edema on the mastoid area. And then there is a particular sign, you know, associated uh, with this called as Toby Air sign. Ye bhi pucha jata hai. Toby Air sign. Toby Air sign is when you are doing lumbar puncture, and if you are pressing the jugular veins on the same side of the blockage, you will not see any increase in intracranial pressure. But when you press the opposite side, you will see an increase in pressure uh, in the intracranial pressure, right? So that is. So be ear sign. So this pitting edema of mastoid option D पे बहुत सारे question आते हैं. Grissinger sign आता है, lateral sinus thrombophlebitis आता है, to be ear sign आता है. But otherwise your here the answer is ecchymosis mastoid is because of battle sign which is of the skull base, middle cranial fossa, uh, you know fracture. Again there is a problem. I think when I am moving away there is a bit of a problem. तो मैं थोड़ा सा pass कर. Right. So I will speak a little bit more closer um, over here, and uh, we will see what is the of this uh, internet issue problem, right? So let me just connect. Internet is working. ICP raised lumbar puncture. So Akash is correct. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Which of the following is true about little area? Little area. Very very common. बहुत बार पूछा जाता है. Um, so which of the following is true? So Kesselbach's plexus is present in little area. So basically Kessel Kesselbach's plexus is another. This is seen as the rising sun sign, and uh, and uh, this is also called as the setting sun sign. Uh, now the sun is rising or sun is setting. It is one and the same in terms of the sign. So this is glomus tumor, also very commonly asked. Yes, the hint over here is the pulsatility of the tinnitus because it is very close to the carotid, uh, you know, artery. And many questions are asked uh, from glomus uh, tumor in FMG. We are going to answer three or four more at least. You can see how frequently this is uh, asked. Otosclerosis se bhi question aata hai. Uh, congenital cholesteatoma se zada nahi. Uh, Gluvier se kabi kabi. All right. Now, 14-year-old boy. This is a classic question. Always asked. This is very very basic. 14 year old boy, so adolescent, young male uh, with reddish, beefy red mass, profuse epistaxis and proptosis. They're giving you every possible option over here to say it is juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. All right. So juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma you will see in adolescent males. It is almost exclusive. Okay. Now, if there is a twisted examiner, then it is possible in females. Okay, yes, juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma is possible in females in very very rare cases. And if it occurs in females, the spread of the juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma is most common in the maxillary sinus. This is a question that is asked quite popular amongst the examiners when they want to make an exam paper a little more difficult so they will ask you about juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma they will say it is a 14 year old female and you will say that no juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma only occurs in adolescent males which is not true it is only almost exclusive it is not 100% only in males so it can occur in females and kabhi na kabhi ye question aa sakta hai because it has uh, uh, come now Holland Muller sign like uh, um, Akash is saying this is also asked there's a question on it when there is anterior bowing of the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus when you're looking at the CT scan in the axial section the other question that they ask related to juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma is why does this bleed profusely and that is because of lack of elastic fibers 
elastic fibers and muscles so there is no contractility there is no contractility so the body is not able to regulate and stop the bleeding and that's why they bleed profusely other thing that is seen is frog face deformity frog face deformity that is what they're trying to say with proptosis because the the middle part uh, canthal area becomes you know very very wide the intercanthal space and the eyes become big so that's why um, you know this is also called as frog face deformity so elastic and muscle fibers are not there and uh, that's why you know this are the three or four questions related to juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma another question is asked is what is the origin of juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma doesn't does anyone know uh, why ye question q and s pucha hai ye bhi question ha that's true can you tell me where what is the origin of jna juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma originates from where this is also a common question that is asked so those are the four things they it is adolescent males and uh, it uh, you know holland uh, holland muller sign is one of the questions uh, elasticity lack of elastic fibers and musculature but what is the origin of juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma origin of jna and origin of nasopharyngeal carcinoma are also commonly asked do you know uh, what the answer to that question is so anterior lip of sphenopalatine foramen that is the answer that is expected okay sphenopalatine foramen it is on the lateral wall so in the lateral wall of the nose where you have the superior turbinate uh me rub this part over here. let me draw it here so in the lateral wall of the nasal cavity you have the superior turbinate middle turbinate inferior turbinate about 1 cm behind the middle turbinate you have these pheno palatine foramen anterior lip of that pheno palatine foramen is the site of origin of juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma nasopharyngeal carcinoma comes from the fossa of rosenmuller which is just there medial to the eustachian tube opening the torus tuberis which i will come to it there's a separate question on it so we can spend time there but this is the other question that is asked inverted papilloma usually seen within the lateral wall near the maxillary sinus area and rhinosporidiosis whenever they're going to ask you rhinosporidiosis somebody is taking bath in a pond this will this is an invariable thing because it the, the rhinosporidium seabury or seabury comes from contaminated water fresh water all right newborn cyanosed at birth turns pink when crying immediate management this sort of cyclical cyanosis is very classical of o a null atresia the space behind the septum if that is called as the coana if there is atresia of it uh, then that is called coanal atresia and that is the space um, you know sometimes it can be a membrane sometimes it can be cartilage sometimes it can be bone and the treatment is oropharyngeal airway um, because in oropharyngeal airway uh, what happens uh, why you need to give this is because children are obligatory nose breathers even though their nose is blocked they cannot breathe from the mouth they are trained to only breathe from the nose so when you place an oropharyngeal airway the child suddenly starts breathing that's why when the child is crying crying is a defense mechanism so that the lungs open up the airway opens up and then you can do some sort of you know a puncture over there like mcgowan's technique is there which akash is saying in mcgowan's technique is also asked where they modify the nipple and make a hole inside it and place that you know um, the feeding nipple inside so the mouth remains open and the baby is breathing from the uh, mouth so this coronal atresia and its application questions are asked so no cpap bipap over here no oxygen by prongs all right now 6 year old child history of mouth breathing high arch palate failure to thrive hearing loss breathing difficulty in and off best management plan ye question bhi bahut bar aata hai for adenoid hypertrophy now adenoid hypertrophy is normally seen from the age 6 to 13 years and uh, this usually will present with this kind of thing Uh, so now the question is why only adenoidectomy or should we do adenoidectomy with grommet insertion here there is a very important clue saying there is hearing loss and hearing loss is because the eustachian tube is blocked adenoid is sitting on its opening 
middle ear fluid will be there and that's why it is adenoidectomy and grommet insertion if this you know hearing loss was not there maybe you could have still done adenoidectomy and no need to do grommet insertion if there is no fluid in the middle ear now here is an important thing i'll tell you which can be asked and i don't know whether you know it or not in the impedance audiometry what kind of curve will be seen when somebody has fluid in the middle ear in impedance audiometry or tympanometry jisko kehte hain what kind of curve will you see in uh, you know uh, the impedance audiometry test when there is fluid in the middle ear or adenoids blocking the eustachian tube does anyone know that because there is also a, a question that comes on it so it is the type b curve and in type b there are three types i don't know if you know that uh, most students usually do not know that no it's not as akash see as is shallow a shallow this is usually seen in otosclerosis where you are not able to get peak impedance because of uh, you know the sound is not going inside the cochlea because the oto sclerosis has happened and the ossicle is fixed okay so you will see as in otosclerosis when there is fluid in the middle ear you will see a b curve and there to b curve may be three types hain and some new question uh, bank question has come there where they ask they will give you type b option there is low volume low canal volume there is normal canal volume and there is high canal volume in adenoids when the middle ear fluid is there you will see normal canal volume b type curve the canal you are talking about over here is the external auditory canal when there is a tm perforation so when there is a tm perforation that time you will have high canal volume b curve and when there is a wax in the ear canal then you will look at, then it will be uh, low canal volume uh, this thing b curve all right so this is another question asked audiometrical question that can be asked if the child with adenoids goes through impedance audiometry what kind of um uh, curve is going to be seen okay normal canal volume b curve should be the most accurate answer yeah flat curve that is a flat curve all right okay a diphtheria again see diphtheria question coming again guys in your pyqs itself diphtheria is repeating 3 4 times a diphtheria patient it develops right vocal fold fold palsy what will be the management abdul wasim is asking what about tympanometry abdullah so tympanometry is the same as impedance audiometry what you are talking about is pta that is pure tone audiogram in a pure tone audiogram you will see mild to moderate conductive hearing loss because it is a problem of just conduction because of fluid that is there when you say the word tympanometry it means impedance audiometry when you say pta that is pure tone audiometry that is different the big difference between pure tone audiometry and impedance audiometry is pure tone audiometry is a subjective test patient is given sounds and you are asked to lift the finger when they stop hearing the sound it is a threshold test you will see a uh, moderate conductive hearing loss okay here uh, akash is saying wait and watch all right and that is correct you will wait and watch because you know that it is a infection the infection will go away the palsy will go away you will not do any sort of injections thyroplasty type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 in type 1 you do medialization medialization where you are bringing the vocal cord towards the medial aspect in type 2 you are doing lateralization where you are moving the vocal cords away in type 3 you are shortening it generally shortening and lengthening is done in sex change operations when you are shortening the vocal cord you are making the voice a little more manly and little more bassy but when you are lengthening it you are making a little more high frequency all right so uh, type 3 type 4 thyroplasty is usually done for sex change voice change surgeries medialization and lateralization are many times done to uh, you know uh, medialization is usually done to uh, when people have aspirate uh, you know uh, aspiration when fluid is going inside and lateralization is done when there is strider okay so that will be the clue Uh, for this particular thing, what is this instrument used for? Does anyone know what this instrument is? You are not able to see it properly. Has something like this. I know it's a blurry image, but it looks like this. 
there is this kind of a shape that is there you know what this is yeah this is a kerisons endo dcr punch we have to make a punch we have to make a hole in the bone uh, to reach the nasolacrimal duct nasolacrimal duct opens in the inferior meatus the space between you know the inferior turbinate so this is a dacrorhinostomy uh, you know punch all right so this is straightforward so nasolacrimal duct okay identify the structure marked in the image below so whichever is very straightforward i am not going to spend too much time kyunki time kyun waste karna here you can see that this is now pointing to the epiglottis so this is the epiglottis uh, nothing too complex over here uh, one second uh, i am getting a call satinder ji aap please somya ko call kijiye na main meeting mein hu sorry guys all right uh mucor mycosis will affect more in this also i think because uh, yeah missed target is correct epiglottitis a is correct reshma is also saying a is correct okay mucor mycosis will affect more in this i think Uh, guys looks like now the internet is back Hi guys, uh, looks like uh, you know there is a sort of uh, uh, internet from Airtel, but um, it has just got we have got a message that it is going to be down for the next three hours, and uh, by tethering it from the phone, uh, it is not really giving us the right streaming quality. So I think we will reschedule this to another time. Uh, however, I think you can still continue doing your, the PYQs, and uh, next time when I do, when I do this, we'll do it uh, much more uh, 